What's going on, everybody? Hope all is well. We actually had just a bit of an audio issue, but we are coming on right now. And hopefully this all rock and roll. Keith, what's up? There we go. We got some headphones. We're good. Beautiful. Yeah, no more echo now, man. For some reason, I've been having some audio issues doing some of these interviews lately. But you know what? What's life with... Uh, without a little bit of, of adversity and challenge, right? Uh, nothing. Man, it, you look, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't mean much. You look beautiful over there, brother. Oh, thank you. I feel, I'm feeling good. Feeling good. So, uh, so uh, you're over there. It's like 5.30 in the morning. You're already getting going. Got a coffee in you? Yep. I got a coffee. Got my, got my first cup, bottle of water. Got a protein shake already. You know, uh, getting ready to, to smash out this day and, and produce a win. Yes, sir. Well, I, uh, I can say that, you know, the day started out with a bang here, too. Woke up this morning to my alarm at 5.30, and uh, I reached over from my phone to put it on snooze. And as I was doing that, uh, my higher power, or <laughs> war that warrior in me certainly <laughs> he took control of my arm and was like, Snooze? What do you mean? All back to sleep. Another 30 minutes while the rest of the beach fit crew is going to be out there doing like five, 500 push-ups and getting the playing. Man, I'm telling you, sometimes we just got to take charge and let higher power, like, you know, do what it needs to do, right? Yes. Got to live in, the, live in that spirit, you know? Live in, that, live in the sunshine of the spirit, getting that good energy. Everybody, Keith Calloway over here and uh, on Facebook Live, man. Everybody watching this right now and, and uh, anybody who's going to watch this recording, you guys are very, very fortunate to tune in on this because this man right here, um, I met through a good friend of mine and uh, business partner, Brian Hess. And man, Brian has such incredible things to say. And since I've been watching you, following you and, you know, tuning into your journey, um, man, I just got to say, so stoked and proud of you, brother, man. I, I am, I just got to say, you know, everybody, everybody take, take what we're about to talk about here and apply it to your, apply it to the inner parts of your soul, your spirit, and let that charge you up, you know, and that's, that's really what we want to do here in life is really kind of, you know, share what it is that we have, you know, gone through in our life, not only from a, a challenge perspective, but also being able to, uh, being able to have some framework and strategy on maybe you know, fine tuning a way to make things better, like not not pushing that snooze button, but finding <laughs> that strength inside your soul to be able to just get up. I still have my my shorts on from the beach, man, like literally, right? And I'm here with my AK shirt on, representing. But the point is, we got to be able to take take charge. Keep, tell everybody about yourself a little bit. Tell them what's uh, what's going on. You know where you where you came from where life's going and how, you know, how really life is, uh, life's such an incredible place when you choose to make it such an incredible place. Well, thank you for the kind words. I'm humbled. Um, the, uh, you know, a little, a little background. I've, I've worked in a family business for, uh, too long, but, uh, uh, 22 years. This is my, this is my 22nd summer working with my dad and my family. Um, uh, it doesn't come with a whole bunch of, uh, easy, easy, uh, silver platter stuff. You know, we work in the paving industry and I started, I started full-time out of college. Um, and long story short, you know, things went good. I, I did the American dream, got married and, uh, fell into, a, fell into some, some bouts with addiction and, and gave it all back. Uh, about five, five and a half years ago, uh, I was, I was homeless and, couldn't couldn't seem to make my way to work every day and come on wait hold, hold on hold on i gotta stop you in your tracks here so you're telling me that you struggled with addiction and you were homeless yes wow man yeah I, yep. I know I, took, I, I know i know that but the people watching this right now don't know that yeah. And so, so you, you found a place that was the lowest that you could have ever possibly been yep. in your entire life. Yeah, I found I found a way uh, in, in the, my battle with addiction that, that put my floor 
I just kept moving it lower and lower and lower. And, uh, and there was no place you couldn't make comfortable for me. Um, and I somehow through all of that, uh, and, and the power, uh, like we were talking about somehow with the help of a higher power found my way to a bottom that was no longer comfortable and, and changed my life. Um, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy, but, uh, September 30th of 2015, I went to rehab and everything, everything began to change. Now, what year was that? 2000, what? 2015. Man, that's four years ago. Yeah. Yep. Four years what? ago. Yeah. Life is, life is a funny thing if you do uh, put one step in front of the other and live with some principles. So, brother, what happened? What, what happened? What, what, changed, what changed you from being in the darkest, most vulnerable place in your whole entire life to actually being able to make that switch? What was that secret, brother? That secret was finally in myself, like in my, like in my, deepest of deep in my, um, in the, the core of who I was, I said, I'd had enough. I said, okay, I can't do this anymore. And the life that I thought I was living and coping, uh, with it just, it just wasn't fulfilling. So I, I made a conscious choice to change my life and I didn't know what it was going to do, what it was going to look like. And it was terrifying. Um, and actually that I was a day late to rehab. You know, that's just, that's just the consequence of a guy like me doing what I needed to do so I didn't have to feel how I felt. Um, but I was a day late, and I, went, I ended up going to, uh, going to a different rehab facility, and it changed my life. And it was the beginning of, of the living with some principles and choosing to win in a, in a, on a daily basis that's, uh, that's propelled me into some success in, in business as well. So do you feel like it was – do you feel like there was, it was you, were you, were you praying? Was it God? Was it what, 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 what allowed you that, like, I, I get that you were in the lowest place in your life, struggling, struggling with having clarity and not having direction and not having a plan and really not knowing where things were going other than the fix that you were needing during that time to feel better. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, like, was, was it, was it fan, like, did, did you have friends and family help you with that? Like, what, what was it? Because I know there's people on there that struggle with similar situations, man, whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs, whether it's, you know, abusive relationships and things that they have addicted to. Heck, there's people on here, you know, who will watch this later that are addicted to work and they don't have the balance with their family to be able to, there's, there's all kinds of addiction that really put us in a place where, where you're almost, you're almost, you know, so focused on something that is not allowing you to live freely and feel what life really has to offer you. It's just this redundant cycle of, of, you know, almost a, a dark chaos. So like help us understand that. So there, obviously there was some outside forces, you know, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't go to rehab trying to, trying to save my life. Um, there was, there was a couple of things, you know, the court system kind of said, hey, by the way, if you don't go do this, you're looking at, you know, if you don't change your life, you're looking at prison. Or, you know, the other side was my family. Nobody wanted to be around me. Um, my brothers would take their children and pack up and leave when I'd show up. Um, but the reality was, I, I, for the first time, three times in 13 days, I ended up in a jail. And I remember laying there that night and... You know, I'm one of those guys who calls somebody because I'm not tough. I'm, I'm a coward. I kind of run from my problems. And, and I, I never called anybody. I sat there for 47 hours one night. And I remember laying on the concrete floor in, in the jail cell saying, God, if I can't die, some, you got to help me. You got to do something about this. Wow. And that was like the little bit of willingness. I just needed just a little bit of willingness to believe that, like, I was no longer the captain of the vessel that was my life. And, uh, and that little bit of willingness was all it took. You know, I just had to touch the door handle and it swung wide open. And all of a sudden, the sunshine of the spirit said, all right, hold on, bud. You're going for a ride. You know, Goose and, and oh, goosebumps everywhere. Yeah. And, and, and once a series of a whole bunch of amazing events. Right. Like I found the willingness to, to take to get on an airplane. And I found the willingness to stay in rehab because they don't lock the doors. They say, hey, there's the door. You can leave any time. And. Little by little, my life slowly started to get put back together and people started walking into it that were, that were honestly, they were made 
to come talk to me. And they were, you know, specially made just to challenge my ego to say, hey, listen, if you want to live successfully, let me show you how to do this. Let me challenge you and propel you into something that could be great. And, and, and it has to, it, it, was, it was probably the easiest but most difficult decision. Oh, yeah. Because you, oh, knew the, yeah. you knew the pain that you were about to face, right? You were in pain. Yes. You were in pain because you were, you were in a place that was not where you wanted to truly be. Mm -hmm. that, that feeling of pain of knowing that you, you can be better than what you were. Yes. That time, that's painful. So the interesting thing about this is you're feeling pain in a place where you're feeling dark and you're using and you're, you're in this world of, of, of darkness, but yet you're about to face pain and struggle and adversity and challenge to be able to actually create this or to rebuild what it is that you truly were wanting out of yourself in life. Right. Right. Yeah. It, it's like, it's like, you know, the, the old saying, no, no pain, no gain. Right. I mean, and that's so, so easily said because, you know, four years ago, well, just over four years ago, you made that conscious decision to change your life and be able to actually spread your wings and become this magnetic force in just over four years, this magnetic force that people are drawn to like they are right now, right? Watching this yeah. right now, draw and hearing this story and giving them hope to understand that they can also do similar things but know that there is going to be pain. You know, the topic of this Facebook Live event is choosing to win is easy. It's easy to it, choose. It is. Choose. It's easy to choose. Yeah, for real. But the path to actually winning is freaking hard. And it's painful. And man, oh man, listen, four and a half years later, are you winning? Oh, I, winning more than I've ever won in my life. And, it, and I look around and sometimes, sometimes wonder if this is real. I love it. Okay, so you've gone from the, the most challenging, dark place in your life where you were lost, homeless, using, ending up in jail to now. Tell us a little bit about this journey. So like over four years, year one, year two, year three, and tell it, and then you'll give us some information about where you guys are now because I know you're crushing it. And, yes. and people need to hear that. So what happened, like if you went through year one, so you went to rehab, you start cleaning up. Yep. So I come back, I come back from rehab and uh, I did, I had done my best. So I'm, I'm business partners with my dad and uh, I had done my best to run us out of business. I mean, and, and a guy like me, who's really stubborn. Um, when I say I'd done my best, there wasn't much left. Uh, we had, we had a bunch of dilapidated equipment. We had, uh, we had some really loyal people that I can't, honestly, I can't believe stayed. Um, but we had, I had done my best to run us out of business. And to be honest, uh, we, we were, we were surviving, but there was no success was written with, uh, with the K and L industries brand. Um, we had a few people that, that, that worked here, but, um, but it was, it was a constant struggle. Uh, so we worked, we worked through that. And, and one of the things that came out of year one that, uh, that I noticed was that if we practice principles that profit followed. And so one of the sayings we have around here is, is principles over profit, principles over profit. You know, if it's raining outside, we don't work in the rain because it's not, it, the principle is we want to do the best work for a, for a fair price for our customer. And we started practicing those things and people started buying into the culture, you know, the culture that we've created here. And I didn't even, I couldn't have told you in year one that we had a culture. Um, so we, we do that. And from year one to year two, we double our business. You know, we go from, we go from uh, about five or six guys to we double it with only two or three more. Right. You know, and this is, and I look around and I'm like, man, we're really doing well. We're really doing well. We're year two to three. We double again. We, you did, know, so did you, did you have a discipline plan? So like when you're in rehab, did they provide you with a daily planner? Were there things that you did during that year one where you were, where you had structure or were you just basically hyper-focused on business? What was, give us a tip or two about that. So I, and this is, this goes into like the spiritual side. I, when I got sober, I thought God was a terrorist. 
You know, I thought he took everything fun in my life, everything that I enjoyed, everything that was that was valuable or that could be valuable. And what happened is that I figured out that perhaps my perception of what this higher power in life was, was very wrong. And I and I found God and I, I found the rooms of uh, recovery and those people, those those lost people somehow together, we all become become whole and. So I started, I started going to church. I started praying. I started, uh, you know, spending some time meditating and doing the, you know, like really doing some introspection on myself and asking myself what it is that I wanted out of life. Not, not just what I thought I wanted, but what it is that made me happy in life, you know. And, uh, and I spent so much time focusing on the principles of life that things just kind of flowed out of it, right? If, I, if you do one right choice after another, then you have a very successful life long term. And that success has just catapulted and doubled and, you know, exponentially grown from the day that I the day that I got sober until now. That is brother. Yeah, like like tears in my eyes listening to this man. It's so incredible. Year two. Tell us year two. So year year two. So the the struggle with a family business uh, for a lot of the guys that are out there, you know, it's always scary to take risk when you're working with somebody in your family. You know, it's already hard enough working with working with your family because there's all this tension that uh, that builds up. And we my dad and I were running into some production problems. You know, we'd we'd grown our sales force um, from one guy to two, uh, which, you know, for a, for a small business is a big deal. Um, well, there's Brian. <laughs> Uh, you, right. so we go from one, one guy to two guys. And what we, what we realize is that we're going to have to either, either get on the train of growth and, and match our products, uh, match our production with the, the ability to sell, or we're going to have a real deficit and we're going to have a problem. So we start buying new equipment and we've never had new equipment. Never. Um, I can tell you that today, I think my oldest piece of equipment is like a year and a half or two years old. So hold on for one second. This is year two. Yes. You're going out and buying all new equipment. Yes, we spent we spent a half a million dollars on on new equipment, not are knowing you, if it, are are you, are you taking loans from the bank or using capital that you've got within the company? Both or it's it's a combination of both. You know, we if if it, the, we we bought a brand new paver and they're like buying a house. <laughs> um, it was it was a big bite, but the. The thing is, you know, I, and I look back on this stuff now and I'm like, man, there was so much, there was so much guiding my process, right? Um, uh, I can tell you the story about why we had, a, why we bought a new paver. We, we, um, there were, I had electronic steering on my 2004 paver and it was something was going haywire in it and it would drive down the road. It would just, it would just tweak back and forth. Like I'd keep the steering wheel in this one spot and it'd just go like this, this down the road, like a fish. And, uh, and I said, dad, we're going to, we're going to drop it off a trailer or we're going to, we're going to hurt somebody with this thing. And he said, well, let's just go buy a new one. And we bought a new one. And it's like this overwhelming amount of uh, success followed the choices of scary. Uh, it's very scary. Very, so, very scary. So to buy that new piece of equipment, there was something telling you to be afraid, to be, to be concerned about this spend so you were almost seeing it as a spend rather than an investment. Yeah, because because when you're a guy when you're a guy that for so long has had these coping mechanisms that they're not sure. winning mechanisms, you know you have to wonder: Am I making the right choice? You know, but uh, until you make that choice and it turns out right, you you have no idea if it's going to be the right one. You can be kind of right, or you can think it's okay, but until you're in the moment where you have the the faith in uh in yourself and in the things in your processes and systems and in your values you have no idea how it's going to turn out so investing into a piece of equipment was was an incredible thing for the business but also personally to be able to know that you've got to hold yourself accountable for this investment and you need to have a plan in place with your staff and your sales team and your marketing team, you got to get the hustle and the grind on here because you've got this, this huge investment you've just made because these things aren't cheap. What is a paver worth? Like when you go to buy a paver or a trailer, like what are these things worth? So a paver, a paver is roughly a small house. It's a, you know, an average of a couple hundred thousand dollars. 
you know, for a, for a small commercial paver. You know, it's it's no tiny investment. It's, you know, the the bank wants everything. If you're going to finance it, the bank wants, you know, everything and the kitchen sink and your firstborn, <laughs> you know. And, and and for that paver, that paver can't be sitting still in a storage unit. No, no, they it's got to be going to work every day. It's got to be going to work every day. And and we're in a seasonal business. We're up here in Oregon um, where it rains for four or five months a year. So. We've got to make sure that the time that it's not raining, that, that we're actually out being productive and doing something with our, uh, our assets to be profitable. That's, that's incredible. So now this is, that was, that was year two. Now you're going to year two. Three. Yeah. Year, th year three. Um, again, these are, these are these problems that we've had have propelled us into six from success. Um, the, the biggest purchase we made in year three, uh, we bought a milling machine. Um, and the reason we bought it was not because we, we started the year and I wrote it down. I'm like, here's a goal. We're going to buy a milling machine. It was we sold a whole bunch of work and everybody was so busy that nobody could mill for us. <laughs> and so I, call, I, I called the, the, the local dealer and I said, hey, I need a milling machine because I can't find a subcontractor. And, and it was just like he goes, actually, there's a guy in Seattle that's selling one. I'm, I'm selling him a new one right now. So let's work this deal out where you can have his, you know, his, his machine. And, uh, and the rest is history that we've, we've become. Do, right. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's like two pavers. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. So you're, you're two, you're three here. You're coming year one. You're just coming out of this whole, you know, this, this place of being lost to year, year two getting a paver, getting new equipment, investing into new equipment. Year three, you're now getting a milling machine and you guys are booked up with work in year three. And yes, you, did, did I understand that as part of that process coming in year three, did you really start to learn about the sales strategies and the different ways to actually start closing bigger deals? Tell me a little bit about that process in year three. So in year, uh, I had, a, I, and again, these are, these are all things that just everything falls into place if you're doing things right. Um, I, had a, I had a young man working for me um, on my production staff, and he went and worked for a roofing company. And he calls me and he says, hey, I think you guys should, uh, I think you guys should look into some of these sales training things. You know, the, the company I'm working for really does some really good stuff with this. And we looked into the things that he was doing, and, and we started just investing in our people. And specifically investing in the idea that we sell value and not, not necessarily cost. Um, it's important for, for us to offer service and offer exactly what the customer needs and not necessarily what they want. You know, they need to be able to make that decision based on the, the information we provide. And, uh, and, we, and we found some partners, some, some training partnerships in the last year that have, that have really taken us to that next level. So when you said investing into your people, man, let me touch on that because there are so many people that I know out there that own businesses and are wanting to get the least expensive resource <laughs> that they can find and invest or in the, in the mindset, spend the least amount as yeah. possible on Right. Spend and invest are two different things. Right. Mm -hmm. like, for me, that, that spend would be like, I'm going to spend some money to eat a fancy dinner somewhere. Some right. can see that as an investment for my body. But at the same time, it's spending. You're not going to get too much out of that other than a quick experience. Right. Correct. It doesn't live with you forever. So investing into your people is that investing into your people from an, a knowledge-based perspective? Is that investing into people from, from a, you know, a culture perspective? Tell me, tell me about what investing into your people did. So just investing into our people changed the culture. Um, it's, yeah, you do have to spend some money if you want to invest in your people, but it doesn't always necessarily mean it's a huge cost. Um, some of the some of the things that we we started doing, um, we've always taken the guy the sales guys to training, um, and and that's I think that's as a good company that's just something prudent to do, 
Uh, but we, this last year, we took everybody who worked the whole season with us to Nashville. I took my entire company to Nashville to the National Pavement Expo. Uh, not because it was necessary that they were there, but yeah. mostly because, because it was like a, a treat. Hey, listen, we're going we're gonna to take you, all of you, and half of the guys that work for us are second chance guys. Mm -hmm. They never left the state. You know, so to get on an airplane and go and go sp stay the week in a big fancy house in Nashville and, and get to see all the latest and greatest and, and get and get to choose the classes that they want to learn about for this season made right. a really big impact. And it started to change the culture and the value system that they operated under, even though we've been trying to, you know, to preach that for the last couple of years. What would you say the very the, the number one thing from an investment perspective into your team, into your people? What would be that number one thing? And I'm shooting this off the cuff. And, you know, so if you were going to say what's the number one thing that had the most impact on your team? Taking an interest in their personal lives. Maybe. You know, we uh, we 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 try to. Um, we try to make sure that they understand that that although we ha we're here to work. Uh, we're here to make sure that they're propelling their personal life into success through the work that they do at our business, at, our, at my company. Um, and, and by, by investing into them just in a conversation and saying, Hey, you know, what's, what's going on in your life? A, a couple of guys last year wanted to get married. So, you know, we, we sat down with them and said, okay, let's, let's figure out how to get you from where you are today to where you are, you know, where you want to be or like buying a house. Okay. Well, I've, a lot of the guys that work in our industry um, don't necessarily have, have good male leadership. You know, they, they haven't had grown up with a dad. And so sitting down with them and saying, okay, if you say you want to buy a house this year, let's talk about what you need to do from between now and the end of the summer to get your credit ready, your taxes ready, your finances ready, and, and just showing them the path to get to where they want to go. Uh, it's, it's garnered some great amounts of loyalty and, and a lot, honestly, it's allowed us to push them to a new level of um, effort at work and, got, and has really been successful. It's paid dividends to us, not only in the culture, but in the bottom line as well. That is, that is incredible because, you know, you hear a lot of people who are business owners that literally say, and they're the, some of the more ruthless ones just say, they're saying, forget about the personal life of your people. This is about money. This is about money. This is about them going to work their ass off and bring back the hay, bring back the bacon for you. So I'm hearing the absolute opposite of that, of being able to actually invest into your people, um, actually take the time to know where they are from a pain perspective so that you can ultimately help them get through the challenges that they might be experiencing and especially being that you've gone through this, all this and all of those challenges to actually then, you know, I'm sure they all look up to you now and they're, they're looking up to you because they know, I'm sure they know the story too, right? Oh yeah. All of, all of them know the story. I'm, and, I'm pretty open about it. And so, and so that share gives them hope. If you've gone through that and I haven't quite been that, you know, that, 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 uh, that dark, let's say in a dark place, then hell, I can make anything happen. Yeah. And that's exactly my point that I tell them. I'm like, Hey guys, you don't have to go all the way to the bottom to reach the mountaintop. It's not necessary. Like you can go from where you're at and just go up. You don't have to go down to get some momentum to come back up the other side. Keith, there are so many people in our industry, man, that feel so alone, so in the dark. They feel like literally they're trying to figure this all out on their own. There's no team environment. There's no circle. There are a lot of guys that are out there alone, a lot of guys and gals that are, that are, that are literally sitting there with their business, starting it up for the first time, or they might be on year one or two or three, and they feel alone. I know some people in the industry that have been in the industry for 10 years and still feel alone. What would be your best advice to them on, you know, breaking outside of the feeling of being alone and trying to figure this all out on, on their own? So I would, I would recommend that you get involved in some social media. Um, my, my circle, you know, and Judd's, Judd, uh, I'm, a, I'm appreciative of the fact that you're in my circle, um, but I found my circle from social media. I found the guys that are not necessarily local, but they push, they push uh, a message of growing your energy and your culture and, and getting over the, 
the stereotypical industry standard of being, you know, you got to be this one, one, you know, this, this almost this gunslinger by yourself running through the wild, wild west. Um, get out there, ask, you know, those, those people that are real winners are going to, are going to be happy for you in your success. That's one of my, one of the big indicators. If you, if people that are around you aren't happy when you're doing well, they're probably not your great friend, you know, and, and you should definitely, definitely change your group if they're not happy for you when you're winning. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's incredible to watch. There are people on here right now on Facebook live. There's some commenting and I'd like to, I'd like to just, you know, say this to, to everybody watching right now. And for people who are watching this recording hereafter, you've got two people that are taking time out of their day today, myself and Keith, and there's another 12 people on right now. And a lot of people popping on and off, but this is not a, a time that we're investing from a monetary perspective. This is Keith's not being paid. I'm not being paid. We're doing this because we want to share the experiences that we have and to give the opportunity to all of us to increase the size of the circle. We're on social media right now and we have the opportunity to establish relationships with each other. Brian, Kevin Gray and I were here at the beach doing a beach fit workout. And I remember, and Brian, I know you're on right now, so you'll remember this. We went in the ocean after doing a, a, a workout where we were, I'll just say I didn't struggle as much because I had more practice doing it. But let's just say that, Brian, before you're 75 hard, we'll talk about in a second, but 75 hard, um, he was struggling pretty, pretty heavily, bud. <laughs> and, and so we, we, ended up, we ended up in the ocean, and it was Brian, myself, and Kevin. And I just looked at them, and I'm like, Tears start running down my face. I'm a bit, I'm a bit of a softy, you know. Um, it feels good. It feels good to not have to, to have the facade on of not, you know, showing tears from time to time. I love to shed tears, brother. It's good man. Um, it's therapeutic. They are so good. My favorite when when you can actually bring tears from a place of of uh, dark pain to a place of extreme happiness. That's a pretty cool thing. But we're in the water and I'm looking at these two, two guys and I've got like tear, I'm teared up in my eyes and I'm like just so grateful for that circle that has been built through social media as you're advising people. And it was just, it was such a moment where I was plugged into the environment I wanted to be plugged into. I was plugged into the people that I wanted to be plugged into. I knew I was going to get home and plug into more people that I wanted to be plugged into. And the incredible thing in life is that we actually hold all of the extension cords, the sockets in our hands, and we get to choose exactly where we want to put them. Exactly. Like we get to literally say, all right, right? We've got thousands of electrical cords at our fingertips and we get to actually plug those in to positivity, get to plug them into people, get to actually, you know, actually be able to determine what direction our future is going to go by where we plug into. And the power forever, of choice and control. Choice and control. It's like, and dude, I mean, listen, we are here right now with the time that's shedding off of our life right now while we're speaking about this. Everybody here who's investing their time, Dom Manzo, Enrique, Krista, what's going on? But everybody, we're investing time right now into something that hopefully will have impact on your life by understanding that life is a freaking painful place. But if you're willing to choose to plug into those places of positivity, the result, results are absolutely incredible. Anybody have any questions for us right now? Brian, yeah, I know you threw up when you got home after that 75 part. But if you have questions, go ahead and, and pop them up here. Um, I want to, Keith, I want to talk about 75 hard. Um, Andy Frizella started the 75 hard program and then live hard. Uh, Alex Lucic uh, had challenged me to do it. And I failed so bad. I did it for 19 days. And he's, I did it for 19 days. It was supposed to be 75 days. And 
the easiest thing for me to say would be this. I couldn't do it. But such bullshit. That's bullshit. <laughs> I totally could do it. I was just I was just not ready to do it. I wasn't ready to commit to actually doing it. And am I ever gonna be ready? I don't know. Like I do the beach fit thing, you know, three days a week and you know, I live a healthy, happy lifestyle. I'm a very active kind of and all that stuff. But I still sit here and I'm like, I'm like, man, 75 hard Andy Frazella. Why have I not been able to get the 75 hard done? Tell me about your journey. Tell me about a little bit about 75 hard so people on here can know about it as well. So seven, 75 hard is uh, basically a challenge where you work out an hour and a half a day. One half of it has to be outside. Uh, there's some other things that go along with it. No alcohol, follow a diet, uh, drink a gallon of water a day, take a progress pick. And, and basically it's just a mental toughness ta challenge. You know, it's, it's uh, making sure that you have the mental fortitude and the grit to get through this, the tougher stuff in life. And, and I've been through some pretty tough things and I, uh, 76 days ago, 77 days ago, you was, just, uh, yeah, just finished. And I, I was a little bit of a softy myself, um, from the, from the physical standpoint, you know, I can go out and stand in the sun and, and work all day, but I wasn't disciplined in my personal life. And yeah, Brian, Brian Hess asked me when I was going to man up and, uh, and join the 75 hard movement. And, and he, and he said, put your money where your mouth is. Let's see if you can do this. And, and it's changed my life. I didn't, I didn't realize that I had the depth to draw from that said, okay, hey, listen, my, my legs hurt. I've had blisters on my feet, sores on my ankles, you know, just things that don't heal because I'm constantly going after it again. And what I figured out is that I have a whole different level available to me than I ever knew possible. I have a well to draw from that's so deep that I didn't, I didn't know that it went that deep. I thought that if I drew from it too much, that it was going to somehow empty and I was no longer going to have any left in the tank. But I, I keep drawing from it. And yesterday I went for a run at four o'clock in the afternoon when it was 90 degrees outside just because I wanted to see if I could do it. You know? Did you and, do Oh, yeah. I killed it. I smashed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, man. Listen, you know what? You know what's pretty cool? Come up closer to your camera there. Let me see the color of that shirt. Oh, that's bright yellow. Check those shorts out. Yeah. Man, I'm telling you, and that was not planned, everybody. You see how that energy kind of works out? Right there. But yep. 75 hard, brother. Let me tell you, when I, I actually saw your, your progress pick after that, and what you said was the 75 hard, actually, the workouts were not even as tough as actually doing the progress pick. No, the, man, the progress pick where you have to look at yourself is the hardest part. The you, hardest part. What do, you, what do you mean look at yourself? Tell me. Tell us about that. So this goes back to that dark point in my life. Um, the, before, before I was homeless, uh, I, I actually got my house foreclosed on. And I took all the mirrors out of my house. I couldn't, I couldn't stand to look at who I was. And today, like to, to go through the process of like, like self-love and take a picture of yourself and say, hey, look at, look at what I'm doing. Look at the efforts that I'm putting in. Um, it's a huge thing to have to take a picture of yourself every day. And, and, and the picture isn't for anybody else. You're not sharing 75 pictures with 75 people. You're sharing one picture and you're looking at yourself like raw, vulnerable, who I am and who, who I'm becoming. And that was the hardest part. I would have rather done an extra workout every day. <laughs> okay, let me ask you something. Do you, do, you look in your, do you look in the mirror every day now? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, took a, I took a selfie yesterday. I'm not a selfie guy. You know, I am a millennial, technically. I'm like the, one of the very first years. Um, but I, I took a selfie yesterday, and I posted that I'm just feeling good. You know, and the, and the reality is things like that for a guy like me who has a hard time with, with you know, shedding the, the, the image. Because what, what happens when you go to those dark places is sometimes those dark times define you. Well, the reality is that things don't define you because of your circumstances. The actions you take from them are what makes you who you are. And so I have a hard time separating the guy that used to be in the dark from the guy that's now living in the, in, in the light and living in the positivity. And the, the progress picks were, a, were one of those aha moments where I said, listen, I'm no longer that guy. I don't have to live under that veil of, of, a, of a reputation. I have a conscious choice to be a better part of society and a better human today. 
I'm so proud of you, bro. Oh, thanks, man. You are you are just an inspiration, man, and just uh, can't couldn't be more proud of you, bro, for all the all the shit you've been through and and where you are now in this in this light. I mean, you're glowing on camera right now, dude, like glowing on camera. And well, that, I feel good, you know. That's and it's taken a long time to feel good. Yeah. yeah. Everybody, look in that mirror at the end of every day or throughout the day when you're brushing your teeth, find that time to look in your own eyes and actually know whether or not you're in a place of, of, of brightness and light like Keith is on this camera right now. And if you're not, reach out to us, you know? Absolutely. Reach My out. DMs are always open. You're on Instagram. What's your handle on Instagram? Uh, my Instagram handle is Pavinit, P-A-V-I-N-I-T. And then on, on, on Facebook. Yeah. You can check it out in the caption. Actually, I did tag, tag Keith in there. So feel free to add Keith in there. Keith, listen, I want to thank you on this Monday morning for waking up so, you know, bright and early and to be able to do this share with the world, man. I know everybody's so appreciative of this. And uh, I mean, we've got, we've got the, uh, we've, we've got government on here in Anguilla. We've got people around the world. I mean, we've got people from all over the world. Zach, what's going on? We've got uh, Alex on George Rocha. You know, George. yeah, George works for me. He's headed here. Right on, right on, George. Man, nice to meet you. Noah Gums, what's going on? Everybody, listen. Thank you for tuning in with us today. Know that life is filled with pain, regardless of the direction. You might as well choose pain towards light versus pain towards darkness, because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's pain, it's weakness leaving our body. Mm. literally say that right yeah listen man we, we 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 pray for everybody here sending positive energy and vibes this week is going to be an incredible week and from uh from myself judd burden keith thank you have a, thank have a great you. week fellas thank you everyone for tuning in looking forward to the next one keith i want to hear about some million dollar deals closing this week buddy Oh, we're going to, we'll, we'll make it happen. I'll send you, I'll, I'll shoot you a screenshot. Can't wait. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Have a beautiful week. All right. You guys have a good night.